Um, welcome everyone to the um, 2024 Writing Excellence Celebration. My name is L.P. Picard and I'm a teaching professor here in the University Writing Program. It is my great honor to emcee this ceremony tonight because it's not often enough that we get to recognize great student writing, at least outside of grades and assessment. But every faculty member in this room can tell you that a single letter grade at the end of the quarter cannot begin to capture the quality of your writing accomplishments, the spark you each brought into your classrooms, and the impact your writing has had and will continue to have. Each year, writing program faculty are given the chance to nominate one of our students for a Writing Excellence Award. To put that into scale for you all, um, 1,363 students were enrolled in our writ sequence across the fall and winter quarters. Of those 1,300 students, you 20 have been identified as being exceptional and inspiring. Yes, that's incredible, right? And so however you uh, felt about your writing and yourself as a writer when you entered your, into your writ classroom, we hope tonight cements at least one thing. Your writing matters. Your writing was seen and you deserve to be celebrated. And I think another round of applause feels very appropriate. ceremony what I'll do is I'll announce our honorees alphabetically and share with you a few words submitted by your nominating faculty member you'll come up you'll receive a great certificate I imagine your family and friends who came might want to snap a photo so give them that you know like they want to commemorate this event so play nice um, and then we'll continue to enjoy the snacks that are here um, but making sure that you all have time to make it to um, dinner all right so, our first um, honoree is Krista Antonio, um, and this comes from Dr. Libby Ketchings. Krista's body of work demonstrates a writer of unusual conviction and an acute sense of kairos, with bracing honesty about her own complex positionality. Her use of the Dissoi Logoi um, classical twofold argumentation, for example, uncovers the paradox of the green energy industry um, recolonizing native um, Diné lands for precious minerals that might combat climate change, even as it does violence to native peoples. Beyond this intellectual integrity, however, her craft ethnography on baking um, hala to explore her dual identity as both Jewish and Diné Lovely, lovingly braids the power of ritual, the vulnerabilities of identity, and the sober political awareness into a story that demands our attention. What does it mean for us to champion political position over a spiritual affiliation that risks harm and death? And how might communal baking and the breaking of bread for Shabbat deploy ceremonial rhetoric to mend those divides? Krista's work is brave and generous, a gift to those who demand that our engagement with one another be ethical above all s. Please welcome Krista. Next, we have Amber Beggins, and this comes from Professor Marissa um, Alger. Amber exemplifies what it means to be an excellent writer and researcher in Writ 1133. They started out by following their curiosity, which took them on research tangents on two seemingly disparate topics, music and addiction. Amber stumbled upon a research gap, the underutilized and undervalued field of music therapy to treat addiction. They wrote an extensive literature review as well as sought out and interviewed a professional music therapist here in Denver. Amber shared their text-based and qualitative research in the form of a mock podcast episode that was as entertaining and heartfelt as it was informative. Congratulations, Amber. Next, we have um, Audrey uh, Retain, and this is submitted by Dr. Alfred Awusu Ansa. When Audrey came into my class, she was confident in herself and less confident in her writing. 
By the end of the course, she was more confident in her writing and less confident in herself. <laughs> Uh, that is what made her an exceptional writer. Yeah, I think that holds true. <laughs> uh, by understanding the flow of knowledge and the fluidity of being, Audrey's writing reveals a deep thinker who recognizes that to simply talk about it is one way to tackle the precariousness of violence. And unlike many writers, she's embraced the opportunities that present themselves in our moments of uncertainty. Congratulations, Audrey. We have Christopher Brophy. This is submitted by Professor David Daniels. I've had plenty of terrific writers in my classes over the years who demonstrate rhetorical agility, a keen awareness of genre, stylistic daring and verve, and genuine empathy toward their readers. Christopher possessed all these traits, but he consistently demonstrated more, which doesn't translate to the page all that readily care for his fellow classmates, charisma and poise, a willingness to ask the tough questions of me, but of himself as a writer and thinker. As one of his classmates recently told me, Chris is the bomb. <laughs> Congratulations, Chris. <laughs> Next up, we have Cameron Evans, and this is uh, submitted by Professor April Chapman Ludwig. In my transfer student writ 1533 course, the culminating assignment is a portfolio that includes an artifact vignette, a literature review, interview profiles, a quantitative study, and an autoethnography. Cam's autoethnography, exploring the marginalized voices of bird watching, demonstrates advanced skills and creative reflection, advanced research methods, on synthesis and is adept with uh, selecting and integrating secondary sources. It is rare to encounter writing that beautifully weaves academic and creative prose, but Cam's coursework does this exceptionally well. From listening to the sonorous sound of uh, 600,000 sandhill cranes taking flight to understanding young black voices in the contribution to um, ecological conservation in the birding world, Cam's writing highlights voices on the margins while truly showcasing a range of writing ingenuity. Congratulations, Cam. Next up, we have Sarah um, Fishbein, and this is submitted by Dr. Rebecca Schultz Colby. Sarah is not only hardworking, but also pers uh, perseveres when faced with challenges. From rough draft to final revision, her editorial on why eating organic produce, uh, produce is healthy and how to make it accessible improve the most, becoming one of the best in the class. She refocused her thesis, completely reorganized her points, and found new sources for many added points. So congratulations to Sarah. we have Ashley um, Gonzalez, and this is submitted by Dr. Kali uh, Murata. Um, Ashley builds narrative spaces that expose our current world as well as what should be. She honored her mother in a tribute, challenged English dominance in poetry with her brother, and envisioned a world where everyone spoke multiple language and speculative fiction. It has been um, an honor to learn from Ashley and her family. She uplifts their voices in poetry forms with candor and truth. For her final project, Ashley surprised herself by bravely declaring that she would just go all out. Ashley, I am so happy for you. Next, we have um, Ben Kangas. 
Uh, and this is submitted by Professor Megan Kelly. What makes Ben such a powerful writer and activist is his deep thinking about the world, his critical reflection on his place in it, and his profound empathy for the experiences of others. In my Writ 1122 course, focused on storytelling as a means for social change, Ben used his voice to call attention to the ways that dominant modes of education are actively harming students' mental health. Ben wrote compelling essays that explored the high-pressure, high-stakes environment of high school and the impact of this intense stress on students and student-athletes. Ben, it's been such a pleasure to witness your confidence as a writer develop this year. I can't wait to see where your writing takes you. You are charting a path for change. Next up, we have Ryuka um, Nagamine, and this is submitted by Dr. Logan Middleton. My Writ 1122 course is built around sonic rhetorics, how people write through and make meaning with sound. Ryuka composed three excellent, thoughtful piece, uh, projects in my class. The first was an album review of animator and musician Louis Zong's record Bosa. The second was a video project on Japanese um, Genkoku or Inca music, which Ryuka herself illustrated and animated. The final project, which she co-created with fellow student Anne Tran, was a 3D printed tea set designed to produce sonic resonances. Ryuka's innovation and creativity in her writing for this course were unparalleled. I am thrilled to honor her skill and proficiency as an excellence award winner. Next up, we have Ali Norman, and this was submitted by Dr. Camilla Kenyon. In my Writ 1122 course on the rhetoric of journalism, Ali's work stands out for its powerful rhetorical impact. From her op-ed on hostile architecture, to her feature article about an activist leading DU's neurodiversity resource, resource group, her work addresses human rights. Masterfully crafted for her chosen magazine audiences, Ali's writing is based on in-depth research, draws on personal experience to establish ethos, and incorporates key stories from her interviewees to engage readers' emotions. She excels in, a, in different genres of journalism and has great potential to use writing to make a difference in the world. Congratulations, Ali. Next up, we have Larissa Olson, um, and this is submitted by Dr. Heather Martin. Comedian and writer George Carlin tells us, no one is ever uh, more themselves than when they really laugh. Their defenses are down, they are completely open, and that's when new ideas can be implanted. Student Larissa Olson took this message in our course topic, The Rhetoric of Humor, to heart. Whether it was through her analysis of Eagle Wit's radical comedy, her critiques of Diet Coke's shallow and destructive depictions of women professions, or the masterful way she brought Carol Burnett's humor and feminism to a new generation in her presentation, Larissa understands that humor is not always a joke. It can unlock our collective ability to change minds and provoke meaningful dialogue. I nominated Larissa for this award because her work embodies the ethos of the course by understanding that writing is not merely an academic exercise, but a means for societal transformation. Her commitment to using her voice for justice serves as an inspiration and a testament to the power of humor as a catalyst for change. Congratulations, Larissa. Next up is beautiful, um, Anna Quayle, uh, and this is submitted by Dr. Um, Robert Gilmore. Anna's work in my Writ 1122 class was exemplary. Comfortable in exploring, practicing, and growing as a writer, she excelled at rhetorical analysis, rhetorical performance, and rhetorical self-awareness. Her final project, a parody of ABC's 
bachelor uh, reality show that critiques DU student dining options, it's really a tremendous project, um, is notable both for its excellent comedic timing and expert planning and execution, all of which she was able to contextualize through thoughtful reflection of her own writing and learning. Anna is probably one of the strongest student writers I've worked with, and I'm thrilled that she is getting the recognition she deserves. Next up is Anna Respit, and this is submitted by Dr. Angela Soa. Um, Anna's willingness to use writing as a heuristic for self-discovery and her ability to bring her reader along in that journey are two central reasons I nominated her for this award. I think her own words say it best. We live in a culture, a society of competition. Whether it be competing against others or ourselves, we are conditioned to do the best, to be the best because being the best means you are successful and success is something almost all of us crave. Although admittedly to different extents and in different areas, many of us strive for perfection. But what about when you fall short, when you get second or third or last, when you failed an assignment, didn't get the promotion, lost a game? I believe that those failures, those imperfections are what make us human, what make us real. There is an art and a beauty to letting go and embracing our innate humanness. Congratulations, Anna. Next up, we have Liliana Ruiz, and this is submitted by Dr. Brad Benz. Liliana's writing demonstrates her intellectual toughness and her commitment to social justice. She is not afraid to tackle important societal issues, particularly those that involve oppressive systems of power. In her research essay, she examined the Sand Creek Massacre and its ongoing institutional implications for DU. In her proposal, she pushed for her employer to loosen stringent work requirements, which if implemented, would allow for greater individual expression among employees. That is, Liliana's work showed courage and strength. For these reasons, her classmates always listened to what Liliana had to say, be it in writing or during class discussions. Congratulations, Liliana. Next up, we have Catherine Sweeney, and this is submitted by Dr. David Reich. I had the honor of working with Kat in my research writing course for transfer students, and from the beginning of the quarter, I knew that I would be naming her for an award like this one. Kat exemplifies the best qualities of a writer. Curiosity, creativity, empathy, introspection, connection, and precision. Her feature essay on collectors is itself a treasure for any collection of essays, and as much as I would love to keep it for myself, I can't help but share it with glee. Thank you, Kat. Next up, we have Julia Wheel, and this is submitted by Dr. Sarah Hart Mickey. I'm honored to recognize Julia Wheel for her excellent writing in our 1122 class. Our class was unique in that we mentored second grade writers at Charles Hay Elementary School once a week. In this setting, Julia's writing really stood out across diverse genres. For example, Julia's goodbye letter to her second grade group was one of the most creative ones I've seen in the nine years I've been coordinating this elementary school partnership. And her literacy narrative eloquently portrayed the power of words in the letter she exchanged with her grandpa while at summer camp. Thank you, Julia, for your excellent work and congratulations. Next up, we have Benjamin Whitehurst, and this is submitted by Professor Matt Hill. From his opening rhetorical analysis of sound writing pieces, Ben demonstrated a keen understanding of how basic rhetorical principles help us build sound compositions. 
One cool thing that Ben did in his sonic introduction project was using original music his dad had written. The assignment asked students to describe what sounds have been crucial in their lives. While playing an original song Ben's dad wrote for his mom, Ben describes an untitled, non-recorded song that his dad uh, wrote for Ben, placing him in a beloved childhood storybook. Um, while his analytical work was strong and interesting, this moment best exemplifies Ben's ability to connect with an audience about meaningful experiences. Congratulations, Benjamin. Can tell that it's time for new glasses um, because I think I see that sky has arrived right okay good so um, uh, this is our, our final recipient tonight is Sky um, Palman and this is some, uh, a student that I nominated Sky's work in our course demonstrates a mastery of voice and pathos driven persuasion each project, her open letter to K-pop fans calling out their dangerous behaviors, her poignant and timely analysis of AAPI identity and Avatar The Last Airbender, her ambitious unpacking of the darkness and light offered in Yawasobi's Racing Into the Night, and her scathing mashup of Victorious and Melanie Martinez playdate critiquing the toxic depictions of romance young viewers receive was impressive on its own. Each project also embodied the definition of rhetoric for Nathan Crick we used to begin the class. Ultimately, rhetoric is about how people act as agents of social change by moving the audience from this place to that. Sky embraced movement at every turn of our course, both for her audience and for her own growth. It is an incredible honor to nominate her for this achievement. So, I think that we should all get one more round of applause uh, for all of our excellent winners. Some quick thanks to wrap things up tonight. Thank you to Amanda Thompson and Sheila Carter Todd and Jennifer Karras for supporting this event. Thank you to the members of the Student Publication Outreach and Celebration Committee, David Reich, April Chapman Lugwood, uh, Camilla Kenyon for helping bring this ceremony to life, along with Richard Colby for recording this, David Daniels for assisting with setup, Brad Benz for checking everyone in and keeping me on task. Thank you to all of our writing program faculty for recognizing your students. Thank you to the family and friends who came out to support our writers. And of course, thanks to our incredible writers for your dedicated and inspiring work. Um, this has been such a lovely e evening. Please continue to have snacks before people in the library come steal them. You should get first dibs on stealing them. Have a good night, everyone. <laughs>